so uh, initially you know to start with uh, you know for my experiences with the uh, iit gandhinagar campus has been uh, tremendously you know motivating in the sense that you know uh, we didn't know anything about the confined machinery uh, and you know uh, it happened one day that you know uh, actually uh, I, i'll just give you a brief about the entire project how it started it was a national level competition for uh, selecting of the architects and all and uh, we we were uh, part of the team for uh, two of the architects who were uh, assigned you know the phase 1 of iit gandhinagar campus hcp design and planning for the uh, hostel part of it hostel parcel and with vastu shilpa consultants we were uh, you know working as a structural consultant for their staff housing so you know actually this entire uh, design was it it was a competition so it was already finalized uh, before awarding the work so when when we started working on it you know we always had it in our mind that it was like g plus 3 building especially for the hostels and uh, housing it they were like g plus 1 and all so we always had a, a concept in our mind that we will be going with the frame structure and all and that is why that, that is what exactly we had anticipated when we started uh, working on it so uh, initially for few months in fact you know we we were working on a uh, resolving the structure with all frame structure kind of a system then we had a, a, a first meeting you know first meeting with professor jain uh, who was also you know uh, serving as a director uh, then you know right now he's uh, uh, he's at uh, B, uh, bhu uh, right now so then he came up with the idea that you know why don't we do the confined why first he said that why don't we do the load bearing structure you know he just said that uh, why don't we do a load bearing structure now the point is you know uh, though it was very uh, possible to do it because first of all you know uh, there were like you know all the floors were having the same kind of uh, uh, room layouts hostels particularly and also for the housing it was possible to do it there was no you know open parking structure or anything there so there also you know it was possible to uh, kind of uh, do i mean at least think about the load bearing structure so when he said load bearing structure then you know initially in the first instance i say i thought that okay uh, let me let me see what he uh, what he is trying to say because you know ultimately everyone is aware that you know probably load bearing structures you know from our past experiences they have performed really well compared to the frame structures during you know the bhuj earthquake and all so we were also little bit excited okay let let's try you know if if i can make it uh, happen we will definitely try to do so but at the back of my mind it was always that you know that g plus 3 how am i going to do that uh, in a load bearing structure you know so then you know i i did some number crunching and then you know uh, i presented to him regarding the uh, you know the wall thickness which i would require so for the g plus 3 you know i i just went to all those guys with you know uh, 35 cm thick wall at the ground floor and then you know uh, probably on the first floor also we might need 35 cm and then we can do the 23 cm thick wall now the point is uh, you know as soon as you make this 350 thick wall again it will lead to the cost of construction then you know the reduction of the area in terms of the uh, you know room sizes and all because that 350 thickness i wanted because you know i was not getting that uh, uh, stress within control because you know the bricks what we get it here in amdabad they you know at times you know uh, we hardly get uh, bricks which are more than 35 kg per cm square or 35 to 50 kg per cm square brick which we get it over here in amdabad so also you know to source so many bricks you know that could also impose lot of challenges in terms of a good supplier as well so uh, definitely the uh, idea was to have a 350 thick wall at the ground floor and first floor and then you know have the 230 thick wall on the above story so then when i went to him he said no 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 we can't afford to do this 350 thick wall uh, why don't we you know think on a 230 thick wall only you know so 
but the challenge is was always you know the mortar uh, brick mortar the you know compressive strength of it and you know the machinery strength in compression so uh, he said why don't we you know uh, source you know even a stronger brick we will also make a mortar reacher you know instead of 1 is to 6 we can go with 1 is to 4 whatever you know 1 is to 3 then we tried lot of uh, uh, you know combinations of the mortar all, also with the brick strength and you know so but still you know we were getting almost very close in terms of the stress check with 230 cm thick uh, wall for g plus 3 buildings okay so uh, that that left us nowhere that you know now what to do so then that then it uh, one day you know it came up that you know why don't we do the confined machinery okay so then he said that okay why don't you try with the confined machinery and then he just gave me few of the books you know uh, read this and then uh, come up with some idea what what do you think you know and then he gave me shwetlana's book you know there were like there were uh, few uh, international literatures from mexico and all those things and he gave me some the references uh you know with the, uh, but th- those were the small buildings you know they were they were never such a large scale project where you know anybody have, would have uh, you know tasted this or tried this for that matter you know so then he gave me the book of you know so many other references he gave me and then he says just go read and then do your homework and then come back to me so then you know again uh, i i then you know i asked him that there are no codes you know so he said that you know let let there be a no code you know and then you you come up with your calculation try to justify yourself you know try to do more number crunching whatever you want to do and <laughs> that, that that made us you know even more responsible uh, in terms of uh, you know what to do so uh then you know i said okay you just give me some time and let me uh, read whatever i can you know but then you know uh, after reading so much of a literature uh, uh, you know i read shwetlana's book uh, though you know i was not in touch with her at that point of time but then you know once we started working on iit gandhinagar campus you know uh, we had lot of interaction uh, you know and that her help has also made us uh you know to reach this kind of a stage where we could actually release the gfc joint so that also i'll just share my views on uh, those aspects but let me just still you know continue what you know we went through so then uh, he says that okay you just go and come up with uh, whatever numbers you feel like okay so uh, first of all i could understand that uh, you know having these kind of uh, confined machinery with millions and everything that will definitely uh, be a helpful but the only thing is i didn't know how to calculate those things you know how do i consider or how do i calculate you know how much force is getting transferred to the mudos mullians you know what is being transferred to the uh, brickwork you know whether it is relieving my brickwork or whether it is you know what would be the interaction between those two you know those things were uh, not very clear at that point of time to me you know there were certain references that you know which are the locations where i need to put my mullions okay so we started with putting the mullions you know uh, at the junctions not more than certain meters you know 4 meters this that then you know wall density we you know came up with you know number of uh, you know we read lot of literature you know what should be the minimum uh, density what would be required the brick density so uh, that's how we started you know uh, so then you know what i did i did uh, uh, basic manual uh, number crunching first you know what i did was uh, i took number of uh, certain walls then you know i placed uh, mullions on the sides you know then uh, calculated those transformed area and you know the manual calculations because first of all i didn't know what to or where, how to start you know so then i i i i i did those kind of number crunching then you know even the compatibility because you know the my rc mullions they are not going to have too much of a sinking while you know b- my walls can sink more because of the you know uh, uh, rc mullions are more stronger so that interaction was also little bit missing in my mind actually you know at that point of time so then at that point of time uh, we did all these kind of number crunching in terms of uh, 
manual uh, numbers you know that you know uh, what kind of a stress which we are getting in terms of uh, you know the mullion stress the brick stress and everything then we de- modeled you know one building first one building in etabs uh you know we tried with uh, e tabs uh, and we modeled in the exactly the same way what we uh, the way we model our uh, rc frame buildings also but then we model all brick walls with uh, parameters of the brick okay so whatever you know modulus of elasticity and all all those things we we you know try to uh, you know give it in e tabs to see you know how how uh, it is showing the result and then we also tried to you know match it up with uh, the manual result and they were quite in uh, uh, quite close honestly so that gave us some sort of more confidence level that okay something is what we are thinking is actually making sense so uh, that was another uh, you know positive stuff now now even after we started doing uh, you know the calculation part of it we still felt that okay uh, there is an issue with sourcing so many of the brick so then the point is uh, you know we we then uh, uh, decided that you know let let us go with you know the flg bricks you know the flash uh, bricks and flash line gypsum you know so that that's what you know uh, professor jain uh was also of the opinion and then also we uh, we had uh, professor durgesh uh, rai also he was also you know part of the team viman basu was also part of the team and uh, shwetlana was also part of the team so uh, what we did was you know we did uh, certain uh, prism test we got it tested you know uh, in iit kanpur uh, to arrive at you know what kind of uh, stress level which we can reach to so that gave us some more confidence that okay you know uh, what are what are the possibilities in terms of using this bricks and we 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 decided to use a 9 mpa bricks and also you know we decided to use the lime also cement lime and uh, mortar also so uh, definitely the lime is uh, uh, the one which is going to have lot of uh, strength in terms of uh, uh, the mortar strength so that is what that is what uh, led us uh, to you know the testing at iit kanpur we got it tested we got the test report from uh, durgesh rai then you know we tested all these bricks with uh, masonry strength and everything and then that's how we started uh, you know designing this confined masonry first building which uh, i can think of <clears throat> could you just excuse me for a second just just uh, you know just just uh, just give me one sec please yeah sorry uh, so then you know we started uh, we then we started working uh, you know the working drawings you know and then we first of all uh, when we started up with the mullions you know there in all the literature it was written that okay you should have these many mullions this at this distance you know now the question was uh, you know how do we make it happen as well you know as soon as we you know even if we say that on paper it it is working but how do we make sure that you know even the constructability is uh, also you know it it is simple so what we did you know initially everyone was thinking that okay let us have the mullion right from the foundation okay but then we really we realized that you know in the load bearing foundations we are going to have the step uh, stepping at the below the plinth level so it was also you know uh, was not working out that you know how do we how do we start our mullions you know whether we should start from the foundation whether we should start from the plinth level have a you know a good uh, strong 
uh, you know plinth band uh, you know so so then that there was there was lot of uh, discussion at that point of time you know and everybody had their uh, views including cpwd who was also part of the team uh, because ultimately they had to also construct these things you know for them also it was a first uh, uh, you know first instance you know because ultimately whatever we uh, deliver they have to also make it happen so then we decided that you know we will not have the mullians from the foundation we will have a stronger plint band and then we will start our mullian so you know then that is how the entire journey started uh, uh, as i understand that uh, shwetlana in uh, last few days she has already you know uh, showed you what exactly we has been done in iit gandhinagar campus for uh, confined masonry part uh what i would do you know so i'll not go too much uh, into it because definitely she has already you know given you uh, more than uh, uh, what you guys um, would have known so far uh, the only the only thing is at that point of time definitely we might have not uh, used certain uh, provisions which you might find it in confined masonry code uh, which is there as of now because it was never there earlier so you know uh, certain things also came up from that experience into the code you know because while working on that you know there are there were a lot of things which uh, everyone realized so uh, what i will do i'll just uh, show you what exactly we uh, what we did at that point of time you know to uh, how we started uh, how we started uh, you know designing this So I'll just. Uh, is there a way I can share my uh, screen, uh, Dhruvi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have been yes. given the access to share your screen. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is my screen visible? No, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. Can you see that? Can you see the screen, Dhruvi? Yes, sir. No, no. It says give control. I don't know what it says. It says give control. Let me do it again. Ah, uh, sir. Sir, you can rejoin and then uh, try to share the screen. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah, sure. Yes. Is it visible now? Yes, yes. Sir. Yeah. So you know, this was that uh, you know just just one small part of the report uh, which you know Professor Durgesh Rai you know uh, kind of you know tasted in uh, IIT Kanpur campus. You know, he he tasted with uh, different uh, kinds of bricks along with the different kind of the mortar as well. he you know tested with the clay bricks it uh, with you know 116 mortar then clay bricks and 1:4 mortar flash bricks you know 116 the 116 is that you know cement and uh, lime uh, you know what we are talking about and which we were going to use it so then the flash brick set number 21 1:6 flash brick set number 21:4 so you know he did lot of testing uh, in his lab and then came up with the uh, idea that you know what would be the basic compressive strength what should be our elastic modulus which we can use what would be the shear strength criteria and what would be the tensile strength and all so uh, you know so we we then you know used this criteria what uh, he gave it uh, to us uh, 
and we cannot we can see your screen but uh, there are no uh, figures or photographs on the screen is it so no there, can you can you read the table no 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 then what can you just a minute we can see your screen but we cannot read your read the table yeah just, just a minute Can you see the table? Uh, we, we, we can see your screen, and well, uh, the, I think I, so we see different minute, icons. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. just a minute. Let me let me just fix this. Let me get a help from someone in my office. Just just give me a. Can you see the screen now, Professor Salvi? So your screen. Yes, sir. It is visible now. Double click on the table which you want to show, or the file which you want to show, sir. Yeah, that is what I. Uh, that is what exactly I am doing. Sir, uh, can you just right click on it and like open with some other uh, format of picture? The the third option. third option just a minute like oh but... is it visible not yet sir how is it possible is this one visible yes, sir it is visible but uh, it is in form of that one we are not able to see the file opened uh... oh Sir, just What's double click on the file. Am I missing something, sir? Uh, in your taskbar or somewhere? Say it again, Dhruvi. Uh, is 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 there a file open on the taskbar? Uh, that could also be the reason. Let me just see. Let me just close everything and then. बन के मजे जाते हैं बन के मजे जाते हैं या मैन यू आर सिलेक्टिंग द शेयरिंग ऑप्शन डिड यू शेयर अ पर्टिकुलर फोल्डर ऑप्शन और डिड यू डू द एंटायर स्क्रीन ऑप्शन ओपन शेयर ट्रे एंड देन यू नो आई जस्ट सिलेक्टेड द फाइल यू नो दैट इज व्हाट आई एग्जैक्टली दैट इज व्हाट आई वी यूजुअली डू सर कैन यू ट्राई विद द होल विंडो थिंग सो दैट वी कैन सी इट जस्ट अ मिनट जस्ट अ मिनट They are unable to see this. What is it? Next one. We can see your screen now, sir. Yes, sir. Now it's. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry for the trouble. It's okay, sir. Yeah. So you know this was this is what I was talking about. You know, uh, uh, what what you know, IIT Kanpur did. You know, it took us a lot of time to reach to these kind of you know conclusions. You know, what material which we will be using it. You know, uh, what kind of uh, bricks. which we want to use it because we then first we tested with the clay bricks which are uh, you know easily available uh, in the surrounding areas and then we tested with you know different kinds of mortars 
then you know flash brakes with you know different kind of uh, kind of motor and then we you know ultimately we you know check the prism uh, compressive strength and all those things and then it was decided that we will go with the flash bricks uh, with you know cement lime and sand uh, motor so that is what uh, <coughs> was discussed and that was you know decided so this this but this took us you know 2 3 months of time you know because uh, we wanted to make a uh, four story building with 230 mm thick uh, brick wall and then you know we wanted to make sure that it is uh, strong enough so that is that is how uh, we you know started uh, doing uh, this this is one part of it second is you know this this is one uh, a small you know what what professor sangvi told me that you know people are more interested in terms of you know how to do the modeling part and this and that so i think this screen is visible no now dhruvi the second one the model yes, sir, uh, yes. yeah yeah so this is this is in the phase 2 uh, right now which is uh, you know already constructed this is a different set of hostels this is not the first phase which is uh, being you know uh, which is already being occupied so this is a small uh, you know plan where you know uh, different kinds of uh, you know br- uh, load bearing walls and all those things uh, we you know try to try to work out in such a way that we get maximum load bearing walls in doing so we had to change a lot of planning also you know because earlier it was like uh, you know we were not getting the enough uh, density you know the wall density and all so this is kind of a small uh, you know this is the same kind of modeling which we do but then we assigned you know the uh, properties of uh, let's say brick and all those things we did the manual calculation as well and then we uh, tried to compare all these things with the you know numerical model because you know at that point of time we never had uh, the code available to us so this is one area which uh, you know uh, i would i would uh, like to you know uh, stress upon this is this is another uh, small uh, thing which you know i would like to show it to you guys you know what we did in terms of uh, the manual calculation you know we did the wall density calculation the strength what we did also uh, the pm interaction diagram for the brick with along with the mullions at the site you know so initially we 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 took certain uh, references you know the wall index uh, calculations from many of the references where you know uh, number of references we referred to and based on that you know we we worked out you know what kind of the wall indexing would be required and what are we getting we had to change a lot of uh, architectural planning as well in order to you know reach to certain uh, uh, criteria we calculated you know what kind of you know the maximum walls which we are getting in x direction and y directions you know these are all these are all basic stuff which we you know started you know what what are the things required you know what kind of a density we are getting you know whether it is whether it is possible to do the confined masonry kind of a stuff or not so that is how you know we we started doing all those things then you know we also did certain number crunching for the certain walls like these are the sample calculations which we are uh, showing you know that is what i am trying to show for the dead load and live load i mean there are certain inside walls outside load uh, walls you know wall 1 2 3 4 5 which you which is already being labeled you know so what we did was you know uh uh from the e tabs you know we we found out you know what what is the base shear which we are getting you know manual calculations were also done in order to uh, see all these things now in, for one wall what we did was you know we did certain uh, manual calculations that you know if i have a four story building you know uh, from each floor how much load is going to get transferred to that particular wall so you know from all the wall including its self weight and all so that is what i mean just, these are all first hand calculations okay so uh, that will give us uh, some idea or indication that you know whether whether we are uh, falling short or whether we are like you know meeting or you know coming right uh, right at the border line or what whatever it is there so you know we calculated all these things you know per meter wall length what kind of a wall length which we are having what kind of a stress which we are getting and then you know 
so we we did the checks at both the levels we did the check at the plinth level where we, you know uh, we have a 230 mm thick wall and then you know below the plinth level we had uh, increased our wall thickness is to 350 so till foundation top also we calculated the stress check and all those things so be also based on the total load which is coming on the wall you know what would be the foundation width requirement and all those things so they also you know we kind of uh, check this pm interaction diagram you know with pm interaction also that you know we we kind of uh, worked out what would be the axial capacity and all those things you know uh what what, what these are all simplified uh, axial load by i mean load and bending moment interaction so based on uh, these kind of uh, iterations we then plotted you know the pm interaction diagrams for all those things and then we checked you know whether are are uh, whether we are falling inside or falling outside of it so these are the first end calculations what we started doing it the same way we did it for the shear resistance as well you know so certain references we took it from uh, the newer uh, you know proposed draft code or from the different literature so these kind of things we did it for each and every wall you know whether whether it is one wall or n walls you know so this is kind of a small uh, you know uh, thing which i wanted to show you know what what we uh kind of did all the calculations for you know and uh, i would also then show the uh, floor plan also you know what kind of a floor plan it was let me just open the drawing for you this is this is the drawing which i am talking about and you know you can see the number of uh, uh, mullions which we had to put in you know uh, just to at the opening locations at the junction locations and all those things you know so uh, these these were these there were lot of debates and uh, you know discussions with uh, all the stakeholders honestly you know where to put the you know uh, this mullions and all so based on that you know we decided uh, you know uh, the, i mean every there was a consensus eventually honestly so these are like a lintel level plants we uh, you know we develop then we also developed lot of uh, typical details which you know kind of these details which uh, we developed because earlier there was also uh, you know discussion whether we should uh, have uh, we should uh, uh, have uh, uh, we should cast our mullions first and then do the brickwork right next to it or we should try to leave the two thing but then you know ultimately everyone was of the opinion that we should have a two thing uh, so that you know there is a you know good interaction good bonding and that is what has been followed this is what you know i was discussing that you know we decided that okay we'll have a foundation we will have a stepped foundation till plinth level and then have a plinth band and from which we started our uh, mullions you know so uh, these 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 are certain you know findings or you know learnings are not the findings i would say there are uh, i mean there are number of in incidences where you know we had a lot of uh, heated arguments you know uh, with with the stakeholders honestly uh, because you know uh, there were always there were always certain kind of uh, issues from the constructability point of view also when the contractor was on board that was also another uh, time when you know everyone uh, uh, was like you know we had to be very sure that you know your the contractor has understood exactly what we are trying to say you know we had to actually educate each and every labor who was working at the site because you know for them also it was you know working with the lime uh, mortar working with this kind of a tech, uh, construction activity you know the stages of construction you know they could uh, you know do the brick brick for let's say 4 uh, feet high and then you know cast the mullion and then again do the 4 feet so you know there were like there were different challenges you know how to how to uh, you know address all those things so for that we had to literally you know professor jain was uh, so proactive honestly and uh, uh, to complement that cpwd team which was there you know the execution team they were also uh, very open to all this so 
you know it, it uh, that gave us uh, a more more confidence that okay at least uh, you know uh, we'll be able to make it happen so yes uh, it was a very good journey so far uh, you know with the confined machinery though there are so many things which we need to learn at least you know i am also learning a lot of things you know from all these professors you know definitely we'll also have uh, more and more insight that how these things are going to behave uh definitely the next uh, the testing of these buildings will uh, tell us exactly how they are going to behave in next earthquake uh, you know if it happens you know so yeah theoretically definitely we all of us have tried our level best to make sure that uh, these buildings in fact uh, they are more earthquake resistant buildings and not only that actually it has turned out almost 20% cheaper than the frame structure building so i think that has also saved lot of exchequer's money that was also one uh, one of the reasons why we decided that uh, let us try and test this kind of or you know try to make uh, this kind of a construction and try to set up an example whereby you know people people can start thinking on this line where uh, you know it does not require too much of a you know skilled labor you know it does not require too much of uh, uh, technologically uh, you know very sound contractor you know the only thing is we need to uh, educate the laborers and the site supervisors and site engineers and i think uh, definitely for g plus 1 and ground story structures definitely uh, this is far better uh, option than the normal machinery building for sure i think this is about it uh, what i i thought that you know let me share with you guys that uh, you know uh, that might be of uh, some help to you guys yeah thanks a lot thank you so much sir uh, we'll take some questions if anyone has any questions to ask sir shwetlana can also join in for uh, answering the questions i guess because uh, certain questions she can also be able to answer yeah uh anyone has any questions shwetla ma'am you are on mute i think i don't have a question so <laughs> no ma'am i mean if you want to just talk i thought you were talking about something yeah so it's very have... interesting presentation sorry we have one question from yogesh chauhan you guys you can ask a question uh sir uh, my question is regarding modeling in etabs uh, have uh, uh, have you modeled the two thing or or, or uh, in the no two thing two, two thing we could not model you know two thing uh, it's just you uh, see first of all you know we wanted to see the interaction that you know when you have a rc column you know See, quite a bit of a load will get transferred to your uh, mullions, you know, uh, because uh, they are more stiffer, you know. So uh, the thing is, you know, you need to see how it relieves the machinery, you know, the brick uh, within. So we, uh, when you see the axial load in the columns, and when you see the axial load in the machinery, that will give you more insight that you know how the load transfer is getting, uh, you know, take place. but no we could not uh, model the t thing it's just the bond which we wanted to create between so that they act monolithically together i think uh, that's about it uh... okay sir. thank you uh, we have another question from uh, ranak sir hello Good afternoon, sir, Anil sir, and thank you for such a great presentation. Uh, actually, it's really difficult to work with academicians for consulting anything. It's really a tough job. Uh, uh, sir, yeah, I, have, that... <laughs> uh, I, I have also an academician, so I have few questions about it, uh, which is uh, very will be uh, which it's a bit practical, and I'm not aware about it. I was asking in the earlier session to Ms. Uh, Dr. Shwetlana also. Uh, sir, I was just thinking that if uh, the size of the corner column, maybe if it is around 200 mm by 200 mm, and uh, how it is practically, it is uh, is it possible to concrete it from half height or it is difficult because as far as four five six, the pouring height is 1.5 meter. So if it is two and above also there's a reinforcement, there's a corner column. So is it uh, 
feasible to uh, pour a concrete and then compact it when you have a very small size of column and then compaction also to uh, achieve that level yeah yeah rona guy i think that's a very interesting uh, point honestly because we were also you know uh, very jittery about uh, these things when we started you know how how are we going to do it see first of all definitely we are not, we we did not have uh, 200 by 200 we had uh, 230 by 30 230 by 230 so, yeah so so because you know the brick module is usually 213 uh, this part of the uh, country so uh, that gave us some some sort of a leeway so usually 230 by 230 with not too much of a congested reinforcement that should not be a problem because you know you are pouring from the top and also you know as you rightly said we we casted these uh, mullions and everything till 1.2 meter so basically you know half the lintelite then we went to the lintel and from lintel to the slab level so it was not that that we had to pour like 10 feet uh, high uh, yeah so but still you know uh, if you have a good concrete uh, mix and all 9 inches by 9 inches people do it uh, you know in uh, many of the bungalows also so probably uh, though you know it is not uh, common now but uh, yes there was uh, some issue but no not much uh, we could uh, get over it that's that's not a big deal now uh, sir one more question that when we talk about confined masonry we do thought about modeling and all the things very accurately but sir when it comes to rc building Uh, in practicality uh, are we considering the stiffness of infill while con- designing uh, the rc frame with urm infill and reinforced masonry infill and practice so your, i'm asking your in your R- question is for rc frame, frame uh, with yes with yeah in rc frame in general practice at in field are we modeling urm infill for the cases see usual case you know it depends on your uh, spd value okay so you need to first understand when you need to model your infills and when you don't need to model your infills first of all so uh, code is very clear about it you know you need to see your spd li- spd uh, limits you know if you have too many walls you know and uh, thick walls and if you want to also in, uh, see you know in a frame what, structure only in a frame structure yeah in a frame structure only i'm saying in a frame yeah. structure only i'm saying that you know code has specifically given how to model the strut and you know what should be the limits and you know what should be the criteria how you model the braces what should be the property of it and depending on the spd value if it is 20% if i am not wrong uh, then your you know structural member size is if it is more than that probably you need to model that but in most of the cases it will not increase that much because you know uh, unless you have all the brick walls which are 230 thick and all so there you can uh, take uh, into consideration you know the infill plus whether if you are having a soft story issue there probably you may see that okay let me check my models with the bare frame and also check let me check my models with the you know uh, infill model so that way probably you can uh, see the difference in the results you know otherwise you may have to follow that 2% uh, walls at the soft story level and all those things so usually not uh, you know uh, everyone does not model the infills you know it depends on the spd value if the spd value uh, is quite high then you might have to okay sir as a one last question uh, professor sangvi was talking about uh, the design of uh, vertically irregular building uh, last uh, session so sir uh, if i see some of your significant structures about monodial heights and all these things so with a significant irregularity of that kind do we uh, is it necessary or do we uh, do some non linear modeling or it is a linear dynamic analysis as per code and it gives a satisfactory result Yeah, it, it it gives it gives quite satisfactory result as for linear dynamic analysis in any which case. So, see first of all, see what see what I believe that you know you should first do the analysis what you can understand. Okay, there you can do uh, a very sophisticated, very fancy analysis, but then you know if we cannot understand the load path, we if we don't understand where the load is going, you know, the basic structural system, you know th- that whether we are making it robust. you know how my pores are flowing you know so these are certain things which which can come up uh, which which one can realize as uh, uh, as we work upon certain kinds of projects you know see at present we are working on a, also a central vista where the new parliament building is uh, also there and there are lot of other things which we are doing 
So there also, you know, there are so many things which are, you know, there, you you not find it anywhere in the books. You know, the certain definitely. kinds of problems you'll never get it in the books. So uh, definitely, certain so, things will come with your own wisdom and uh, <laughs> gut feeling for sure. But definitely, it has to be backed by certain calculations for sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have uh, one more question from Yogesh. Uh, sir, uh, my question is regarding, uh, regarding mo modeling. Uh, uh, how the modeling of confined machinery in ETAPS uh, would be different than uh, uh, your reinforced concrete frame building with infill walls with properties of uh, uh, machinery given? So is it actually, the same? Or? Actually, yeah, it is. It is almost same. Why? Why it would be? I mean, it's like basically what we are trying to do is we are trying to model a machinery or a brick in within the same software i mean it is the same it is according to me it is the same uh, there, is, there is no difference why 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 would you even think that there would be any difference uh and uh, are we providing any bands and all that in confined machinery model yeah we we in models, no, because the ultimately, even if you provide the bands, it will not show any values because it is uh, uniformly supported. Okay, uh, bands is basically what it is uniformly supported on the load bearing wall which you are having. So whether you model that or not, the only thing is you know the more uh, you know as soon as you have a band, definitely it gives you that uh, confinement to the building and it will not try to uh, you know fall apart. So uh, no, that mod, uh, that band uh, that can be modeled. It's not that that you cannot model, but the the bands which are supported on the wall will not show too much of a reinforcement, which uh, which is which will be in line with your uh, codal uh, suggestions also. So because you know if you see the four three two six and all, it uh, says the band the reinforcement uh, in the band everything is being given. So same way it will also not show too much of a reinforcement. So it will definitely uh, be in line with what the code says, but that you need to try it out once you know you have to model uh, uh, you know one building and then see with the different kinds of uh, options, Yogesh. Okay, sir. Thank you. Ranak sir, do you have one more question to ask? No, no, no. Thank you. Uh, do we have any more questions? Um, I would just like to add something, if you don't mind, uh, uh, regarding modeling. Uh, uh, maybe just to clarify, uh, uh, I hope uh, when you talked about difference in modeling between infill, uh, reinforced concrete trains with infills and uh, confined masonry. So I believe in uh, reinforced concrete trains with infills, you don't model the entire infill uh, as a model. Here it is load bearing structure, so you have to model a wall. There is no way out. Huh? I mean, in a confined masonry, whereas in reinforced concrete train with infills, you have different options, whether you model. It depends which software you use, which model you use. Your main element is the frame. I think this is important, very important for students to understand, whereas here Correct. you cannot go without the wall because Correct. this uh, confined <laughs> because it's all about the walls, isn't it? So, so uh, but you are, what you were saying is you model these confining elements because you want to see the gravity load uh, distribution between yes. the wall. That is only for gravity load, but for lateral load, the main element is the the wall. Not yes. not uh, these confining elements will not take much of the lateral load, or very little actually, in the model in ETAPS model. And ETAPS right. has option of. Uh, identifying properties, different properties for parts of the wall. So that option, when I give this course at SEPT, that's, that's what students were, were doing, at least in ETAPS. Uh, they use wall model, but they give different properties uh, for, for masonry portion and for the confinement portion. So the results will be different for both systems, definitely, if you compare the results. Yeah, even even you know uh, nowadays uh, also you know they can change the, those Moolean properties to the brick wall also as if you exactly. know this is not a confined exactly. one. So then you can see the difference as well in the result. So it is very exactly. simple to uh, see those things. Yeah, in ETAPS is particularly I think uh, yes. suitable. Uh, right now the students have e uh, SAP access here, so they we were doing a white column model and the others, but. 
it is possible to use ETABs as well and uh, model it uh, more com comfortably, maybe for the yeah. for design practice. Yeah. Correct. Then, Correct. Then then SAP. Thank you. Yes, thank you, and thank you, sir. Uh, Sandhu, sir, do you like, like to say something? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, do we do we uh, no more questions now from participants? Uh, no, sir. I guess we are done with the questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last call for um, questions. If anyone wants to ask, I think so. We are done with the questions, sir. Uh, uh, so uh, thank you, Anil, uh, for for joining uh, this program. And I think uh, you share your experience. It's really nice, and uh, I think it, it give a better insight when we are executing any any project like this. So I think it's a uh, uh, quite valuable input from your side. And uh, I think uh, uh, we also want to invite you for many other projects also. Yeah. <laughs> Because you are handling Central Vista project, and I think uh, it is quite prestigious. And once uh, the project is supposed to be over, I think uh, the doors will be open for you to uh, make presentations. Uh, so we'll take advantage of you uh, in future. So uh, thank you very much for accepting the invitation and uh, delivering uh, uh, your, I mean, sharing your experience with the participants and all of us. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shwetlana. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, Sangu, sir, when we start again? Yeah, uh, actually, we uh, uh, we want to start as early as possible. Uh, it, we will take a 15 minute break. Uh, participant, is it okay or shall we take 15 minutes is sufficient for, for the break? So, we can start the validity session as early as possible and we can finish. Uh, it uh, at the earliest, right? So we'll take a 15 minute break. It is uh, 157, so we can meet around 215. Uh, ma'am, it is okay? Jatana, ma'am? Yes, yes, that is fine. Thank you. Uh, because our validity session, I think it will continue for 45 minutes or maybe one hour. So we are supposed to finish by 315 uh, at, okay. the, at the max, yeah. No problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you. Now, uh, I'd like to tell the participants that we'll be joining again uh, at 2.15, uh, the link of which will be shared to you in the group. Yeah. Thank you.